two major, major, major things that you can do to a spinning rail to get you a lot better um, work out of it in the winter months. Mm -hmm. and the winter months are the, is key. Um, once you start getting that 10 degree weather at night or daytime or even colder, um, reels will start to act funny. Everything in life starts to act funny in cold, cold, harsh weather. So I'm going to show you two things today on this pen reel, which is synonymous to all your other reels. Um, reels, when they're made, there's grease inside. And the grease is predetermined by either a squeeze level or it's kind of like having a torque wrench. The pressure stops, it's you know, it's it stops when it's told to stop. So grease drops, it's told to stop by robotics or the person or the machine squeeze, however it is, the person comes in and it's it's already a pre-drop. So all these reels are the same. I don't care if it's Abel Garcia or Fluger or Shimano or Pick. That's just the way that they're designed and yep. they're manufactured. So what you're going to find out, or what we found out, actually what what, um, what one of our elite guys over on Oswego, Oswego River found out last year was we had on a spinning rail, the inner reverse was slipping every once in a while in extreme cold temperatures. So all that was was inner reverse is instant stop of the spool. Mm -hmm. Do you follow me on, on inner mm -hmm. reverse? Yep. So what was happening in super cold weather sometimes it would skip or not catch meaning it would kind of go backwards until it caught what we found out was it was because the grease inside was being manipulated by the cold temperatures we wouldn't have known this if the guy up on oswego river wasn't fishing every day in january and, and came out with it for us yeah if you look at pen fishing reels they're made for salt water use that's why there's grease in there all reels, they don't know if they're going to be using salt water or not, so they put grease in there. Um, so what we found out, we started playing with different oils, synthetic oils, getting away from grease, putting the oil in. We found out that we were getting the gobs of grease out of the bulk of the grease out, maybe a, a, a nice little shimmer or like a fingerprint across certain areas. You're in fresh water, you don't need corrosion resistant stuff. Um, we found that that was eliminating that uh, that reversing mechanism or the inner reverse from slipping. So it's really simple to do, to get into, I need glasses. Um, all reels are gonna be, for the most part, the same. So I kind of play with a little bit on this one. You're not gonna see too much grease coming out, um, but there's some in there. Uh, so obviously you just take these, on this particular reel, you're gonna take the three screws out. And the biggest thing is I'm doing this um, once we get inside. What we don't want to do is take Q-tips or anything where you can get the filaments of the material inside the reel and stuck inside the reel. Yeah. So what I've actually found is what works for me, I do a lot of winter walleye fishing and vertical jigging lake trout myself. What we found or I found is that... Um, I can just come in and take a um, like a, a zip tie, and you just come in and just all you gotta do is just stroke it out of there, yeah. um, and you're in business. And then just make sure that the what you're really looking to do, and the reason why we're penetrating this reel is to get the gobs of grease out. Um, on our particular reels, I can't speak for outside of our brand. Uh, we put around all of these screws. Um, around all these screws, we'll put a clear little washer. Um, you can kind of see it here. This is a clear washer. So when you're starting to pull your reels apart, my guess would be it's an industry standard, but I can't say for sure. Um, just make sure whatever you're pulling out goes back in because that washer is there for a reason. It's helped you get a good bite to keep water out um, yeah. or salt water, salt water intrusion. So now I've got these three out. Pull the fourth one here. This is going to gain us access. So anytime that you have an issue with um, anything in that reel or you feel that it's not smooth or maybe you dropped it in dirt and it's kind of got that, um, that grind feel to it, you can just very quickly, easily take it apart. If you do use anything in there um, for cleaning, I would use like a toothbrush. Go with a toothbrush and just clean stuff right on out. Take off the housing there. Um, 
and essentially you're in. What you want to look for is nowadays there's a lot of bearings and reels. This happens to be one of them right here. Just make sure whatever comes out is in an order that you remember just where it goes. Um, you can very quickly and easily take, I'm a big fan of this synthetic oil, just like in a car, you know, it just doesn't break down as fast. I'll actually put this all around the edges here, you know, both sides. It's going to get a little greasy, but um, put that on both sides. As you see, two washers came off it. Just remember which side they go on. That's going to go on this actual gear side. I'm not a big fan personally. Once I get inside, all we're trying to do is get the globs of grease out so the unit reverse doesn't accidentally slip in that five degree temperature. Um, I'm not a big fan of unscrewing all these other pieces because me, stuff falls apart, stuff falls out. You can certainly take it apart. All these spinning reels are pretty simple once you start taking things apart. Um, but you can actually see, this will pop out a little bit. You can see how you can get in there with a zip tie or maybe a paper towel, something that's not going to leave filaments, yep. and kind of get the bulk of the grease out. If I open up this reel, this reel, or any of those behind me, you're going to see, like, there's a glob of grease right there. There's a little blue glob of grease in there. You know, I'll just come in and, you know, take that out. Now, that's not me in reverse, right? I'm not so worried about it, but I just get all that stuff out of there. I'm a big fan of more is better you know you load it all up get all this good synthetic grease and oil in there because really all you're trying to do is protect it god forbid it does fall in the water mm -hmm. if you want to go with some grease um, they sell it here it's just a little bit of pen grease this is the stuff that comes from the factory meaning this is what's going to be gobbed up if it's gobbed up so when it comes out of the machine to put into a reel in any plant around the world, it's going to come out in a tube or some sort of mechanism where it's coming out in like a droplet form, so to speak, or how it came out on my finger. And it's going to be on all the reels on the inside. So on in this case, what you would do is just come in and just put your smear your fingerprint on it so that there's no mass concentration anywhere, but you have a light greasing on critical components. Um, again, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't use the grease as much for me and my style of fishing and my temperature zones down in New Jersey. The oil's fine, just fine. Um, my guy up on Oswego River switched over to synthetic oil and he has no problem steelhead fishing and brown trout fishing in the middle of winter. So he's fine. If he's fine in Oswego, you're fine. Um, where you might find some differences is if you're up on like Saranac Lake where it's like minus 26, um, but then you're probably not fishing. And if you are, you're in a tent, and now the warmth of the tent is going to bring up the ambient temperature inside. And then again, this is back to is it minus 5, minus 10, or is it 30 in here? Yeah. Um, so that's really where it's at. It comes down to the temperature of this. Um, again, just make sure there's plenty of oil in there. Get the globs of grease out. That's really the most important thing I wanted you to, to see because really the reels are going to be fine. One reel might reel a little stiffer, maybe not stiffer because of the amount of grease, but as soon as that thing starts kicking it in reverse, it's going to be frustrating. That's when the fish hits and that's when you're going to have challenges. So that's going to cure that problem. Do you guys have any questions on that aspect? It's pretty straightforward. And really, the thing is, is I'm a big firm believer in garbage in, garbage out. So when you start getting into certain types of reels, things are made for specific reasons at certain price points. So if you are having problems with a certain reel in a certain range, it might be time to start to invest in something a little bit differently. Um, and again, it comes down to your, your budget. But, you know, a $100 spinning reel, in essence, is... is functionality standpoint the same as an inexpensive reel it just comes down to drags um better components maybe some more extra added ball bearings or bearings for support if it's you know certain kinds of reels um so that right there is going to solve your winter issues from the standpoint of functionality in a reverse slipping um slowing down i heard a couple of the, the conservation officers saying sometimes the reels get really stiff mm -hmm. well it's because there's too much of this in there yeah so get to the oil change out to the oil um it's not 
it's not too terribly expensive. And as you saw in me talking, you, you know, you can have it done in three minutes, you know, maybe five. Um, the other thing I want to show you, which is probably just as important, I want to seal this back up. Um, actually, no, I'll, I'll let one of you guys seal this back up because this is going to be one of your reels. So, one of you guys can put it back together. Um, leave you do it whatever you want. I'll show on this reel the second aspect of it. So, let me break into the actual reel. Let's leave all that together there. We're going to get into the drag system. How many times have you caught into fish where the jags, the drag's not smooth and it catches and it goes or herky jerky drags? That happens a lot, especially on less expensive reels um, or those inexpensive combos. Mm -hmm. It happens really bad. And, and some of ours as well. Um, when you get into some of these higher price point reels, $30 reels, I mean, no combos, I'm just talking reels, more like a Fluger or an Abu Garcia or a pen. Um, all reels, kind of like I was saying before, they're all made the same way from the drag standpoint. They typically put a washer, a washer, a washer, a washer. They stack the washers. Um, and I'm not totally sure, but I have never come across in my life yet, I'm sure maybe there's one out there, where you have drag washers that are all the same material. Um, I haven't seen it yet. Usually it's something different, like a carbon fiber to metal or Teflon to uh, plastic or plastic to metal. Um, and the reason they do that is to get max drag out of that reel. So the biggest thing probably 10 years ago, if you were at all these trade shows and, and being like what you guys do at the shop, is everyone was concerned about ball bearings. How many ball bearings does it have? Well, that doesn't mean anything because, again, it's garbage in, garbage out. You put 20 bad ball bearings in, you might as well have a good reel and two good ones. So um, now that kind of conversation has shifted, and everyone cares about max drag, especially in salt water. That's all they want to know. Max drag, max drag. What's it, what can I reef it down to? Well, in your scenario up here, you're running light lines, light tippets. Um, you need to have a slow startup inertia in your drag. So max drag doesn't really do anything for you. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is how to take on any spinning reel, but specifically a pen, because we know for a fact it works with our stuff, and show you how to change your drag range. And this is really important anytime you're using light line. So if you're steelheading over in the Salmon River and you're running four pound fluorocarbon, let's say, um, all the way to maybe you're just perch fishing and you're using two pound, you know, and uh, have you had any break offs? where you actually go to set the hook and the drag doesn't go and the line pops. Okay, a couple guys earlier I was talking to had it. They just it's just the startup inertia, the force that's that the force that starts that drag to start releasing line is too great and something has to give. And it's the two pound test or four pound test or if the fish is hot, it could just be that that it's that force that breaks it. And a lot of that comes down to this drag. Or it comes down to the action of the rod. You have a soft action rod, kind of buffers that, so to speak. Um, but what I'm doing here on these small pens, the small pen reels, unlike the same, so let me back up actually, this is a Pen Battle 2. The Pen Battle 1000, which is this size, it's a small size we make, is going to have the drag washers held in with screws. If this same reel had in a 5000 upstairs, it's not going to be screws, it's going to be a spring retainer clip. To, to hold the washers in. So what I'm doing is getting into the washing washer system. Here's your metal. Actually, pull them right on out. And if this was the first time you guys went in that and you just dumped them out, you may not know, but I know just because I'm doing this for so long that it goes fiber, metal, fiber, metal. And that gives the max drag. That gives you your highest max drag out of the factory any spin reel. So that's the way it's pretty much going to happen. You can manipulate that or forego max drag because we don't want to break tippets and we want to get a, a better range at the low end. So what we'll do is we'll actually take fiber, fiber, metal, and metal. 
some of the bigger reels might have more washers. So it might be fiber, 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 metal, metal, metal. But with these little 1000s, it's two and two. So you're just restacking is all you're doing. Um, if it's carbon fiber, you don't have to put any grease or oil on it, just to keep them dry. Um, depending upon other kinds of materials, some people will say put a light coat of grease. I'm just a firm believer in dry, I just dry for me. Um, you can restack this, put them back in, and of course, I should probably do one at a time. Um, well, you guys get the idea. So there it goes. Now, what we did in doing this again is we're worried about startup inertia. So we're reducing that max drag, and we're putting it, we're putting more of that range down at the low end. And again, this is all over the Salmon River and the Oswego River, where we started playing with this with big giant fish and really heavy current flows and the light line. And we increased our range at that low speed and that startup inertia to get that drag moving ultimately changed for the better. Now, granted, if you're out in saltwater and you're trying to stop a tuna, then you got to go in the other direction, but we're not there. Um, maybe when the lake trout get more and more aggressive, in, in different times of year, they're more aggressive. You might want to quickly pull that out and restack it if you feel you need to. But A is cold water fishing aspects. You're better off restacking it and getting that low range. Um, that is like literally all I really wanted to show because I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Um, the big thing is. is any spinning reel, your Shimano reels, you can restack those drags if you feel. Mm -hmm. and, and right out of the box, you may not have to. It just doesn't hurt to do it. Yep. So, um, do you have any questions on that? Pretty straightforward. Yep. It's just thinking in a different light because most people just take a reel out of the box and like they go fishing. Doesn't um, matter if the five hundred You know, I, I didn't do the tests on that. Um, our service techs in Philadelphia said fiber on bottom, try that first. And then Kevin got his whole range, everything was working perfectly, he was not breaking tippets, so we stuck there. And we, it's kind of like driving over fish to go find more fish. Then you go place it. Stop, yeah. So, um, and I'm sure there's a reason why the tech said yeah. fiber on bottom. I'm just not a mechanical engineer. I got the fishes, <laughs> you know, it gets mad when I lose my jigs because the fish took them, you know. Um, but I mean, those two basic things right there is probably going to help you out from a frustration standpoint tenfold, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I don't hear much, to be honest with you, about anti reversing, backing off, but then it's again, you set right. the hook and it gets going and it's, and it's cold temperature, right? That's why I keep looking ahead. There was one time I had my drag failed, and I have to flip the switch and go backwards. Yeah, it's because of, and it was a cold day, right? Yeah, right. Like how cold? Like five? Zero. Yeah. yeah. So Fresh when outside. when it we we yeah. found when it gets to about eight degrees is when we started to experience those challenges. Um, four degrees, definitely, it was constant. So that's what you experience. Get the grease out of there. Put some oil in there. There's all sorts of stuff. There's like cold weather grease, there's cold weather oils. Um, we have special proprietary stuff and that's been working just fine. So, um, and really that's it, you know, and uh, we even had it to Salmon River a couple times this year when it got cold. A couple of, of our new reels were doing the same thing. That was the first I heard of it at that temperature. And when the shop opened up the reel, it was just caked and grease big. The whole thing, it just looked like the whole jar of grease went into it. And that's why everything kind of got stiffened up and just things started to not work properly. Now, when you rip all the grease out, do you have to cut like every you got to put more oil in, more oil in a little bit more often as opposed to the grease you're always getting there? Um, I we haven't had to yet unless you feel that the grease is or the oil's leaking out. Like, if you're like right now, it's leaking on the table, it's not even sealed up. Um, but when this is sealed up it's not going to be leaking out. I wouldn't like flood it, like put four ounces in there. 
Um, you only need a little bit just to coat the moving parts. Um, or you can put that, like I said, that like little shine of grease on. What you don't want is just the clumps. That's the big problem. Um, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll let you guys put this stuff back together so you understand what I'm saying. Like there's that little plastic yeah. um, rubber grommet. You can see this one here has what looks to me, I, I can't say it well, it has grease on the screw, which in salt water doesn't hurt, but you guys aren't in salt water. Um, so you can kind of see it for what it is. And then these are the screws for the drag. Um, actually, I should probably put them in. I just don't want them lost because they're so small. Um, and really, it's that's it. And if you do that at the end of fishing season, you take it apart, go in with a toothbrush. A toothbrush really allows you to get inside without taking any added screws out. You can really get in there. Um, get out, put some, I'd put oil in it, and you're good. You're good to go. Um, you know, the more you go into these reels, the more that you have the propensity of are you stripping the screws, and stuff like that. Um, with our stuff, the Penn and Abu Garcia and Pfluger, we have um, a full parts division. So we don't have to worry about, I stripped a screw. We can get parts for all that stuff. Um, some of these combos and other, other companies, it's not as easy to get parts. Um, drag washers, you drop a drag wa washer in the water because you're trying to manipulate something. You can have drag washers in this store in four days, three days. Um, you know, so there's there's things. That's why, and that's another reason why I don't go into too much of taking too much apart because things fling out and fly out and drop out and like now I'm down now, you know, until I get fixed. Um, but that's that's the gist of it. Um, I mean, I could get into more complexity stuff, but I don't think I don't think you need to. I think it's really it's just about taking care of it, you know. Um, and that's that simple. Are there any other areas on the reel that need any kind of lubrication, the bail system, or anything like that? No, um, out of the factory, this stuff comes out pretty good. Um, so if you look at this, I mean, you could take this as a bearing here. You could take and put some oil on that, on this piece right here. That's another bearing there. Um, you could drop a piece, you drop the oil. Oil's going to work its way down and in. But your whole you know gear system as it's spinning and running and you've got grease on the inside or oil on the inside, it's all gonna move around. Yeah, and especially with the oil. You know, oil's a fluid. So as this is getting in your car, yeah, upside down, fishing, oil's gonna be coating all around. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I like it. Yeah. So and is that the city of that unaffected by temperature for the most part until you feel like crazy cold? And crazy cold, and I'm sure certain oils are probably going to be act and react differently to different temperatures. But um, that specific one there. Yeah, the pen oil. Yeah, yeah you're fine. Yeah, that's we're, we're fine down to like four degrees. I know that. Okay. So that's the one oil you have. You don't have like a special cold oil that's asking for it. Yeah, I mean, for us it's fine. Yeah. Uh, but there is cold weather oils out there. Yeah. Um, Cal Sheets actually, he's a um, a real a real like he does custom real work like Penn International and stuff. He has cold weather grease and oil that you can go. Yeah. Specifically made. No, when and when you look at the stuff in the in the comments, I got all drops of gold. I'll get in there and get to put it in these. Yeah. There's no label on that thing. For the rest of it. Yeah. <laughs> so was, yeah. I wouldn't doubt it that it's already set for it. Yeah. Um, you know, if, I'm sure Penn is not thinking along the lines of ice fishing. What makes Penn so attractive to an ice fishing guy targeting Lakers Pike? Is that the drags are designed for fast running saltwater fish? Yeah, meaning that's what I want if I'm targeting ten pound fish, like Lakers. I mean, I, I mean Lakers. I would think under the ice. I don't fish them through the ice. I fish them water. But the other day, like six pounders were. You see them twenty feet below the boat, and next thing you know, they're at sixty again down the bottom. Yeah, and they took drag to get there. So that's where it comes into play. I want the best drag. I care less about ball bearings and all. I want a good smooth drag system to withstand maybe it's the pike of a lifetime that hits or maybe like I'm in musky world. We catch a lot of muskies through the ice by 
trying to catch walleye. Yeah. And if that fish hits, I want to I want to be able to at least have a chance. Yeah. If I had like some other combo or one of the lesser expensive things or not a good drag system, you can't catch them. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I need to be here. We were always touching like this in our first year. Okay. And that's the point on those for like this. Yeah. Time. So, you know, I mean, you never know when it's going to happen. So you just better off being prepared. Right. Um, you know, do I think that everyone's going to go out and buy a 70 or or $100 reel? No. But I would have to think that there's a certain segment of guys that either have that stuff in the open water or use it for trout. Maybe they go to steel hunting once or twice a year and they can now cross it over. And that's where you guys come into play and say, look, we can change this around. We can add this. And now we're crossing you over. Or that guy says, no, maybe I will use it for ice. And I can use it here, here, and here. So I will invest in it. It's, it's an investment. You know, you, you're paying up now for long-term gain, you know. Unlike the other way around, when people just buy it because it fits the bill. And at the end of the year, they throw it away. Chris, now I can get parts for all these different Fluger included, like Penn. Fluger, Abu Garcia, Penn, um, Mitchell. You know, we have full parts. So all the parts for Penn come out of Philadelphia, housed in Philly, and in Philly, and then everything else is out of Berkeley headquarters. So, um, but, you know, it's the drag. It comes down to the drag, in my opinion. You know, and you guys live in big fish country, you know. It's... You, you just don't know what's going to hit, you know, with that 15 pound laker or, 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 or you know, kind of stream fishing too. You know, get into a big brown or something, and heavy water, you know, that drags up real quick. Or, you know, well, it's the startup and it's the smoothness. Yeah, so, like I said, I mean, and, and you might have to play with it a little bit, like buy a reel and go out and see. Mm -hmm. It only takes one time to get burned to realize I'm changing this around. Yeah. Um, but I guarantee you that if you go and change the drag, the drags around, right out of the gate, you're going to be better off. But you're not going to have that max. But most of us, I don't even think most of us get to max. So, you know, tuna fishing, I can see it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think. Yeah. Now, yeah, 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 that's what I mean by max drag. The only, the, only thing is, right. the only thing when you max out a drag, all that force has to go somewhere. So is the hook going to straight down? Is the line going to break? Is the rod going to break? Or is the reel going to buckle and bind the break? So, oh, that force has to go somewhere. So max drag is never really a good thing, um, in my opinion. You know, just something's going to happen. It's like towing a boat with a four cylinder. It'll get the job done, but it ain't gonna last you too long. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so you know what I think. So, just from that trailer from Florida on a four cylinder. <laughs> yeah, and it gets the job done, but it's not gonna last. <laughs> so what so, so, is equivalent to like a one thousand size? I'd have to put their 1,000 against our 1,000 size relation. I would say it's probably pretty close. Um, and that's the smallest one Penn makes, so Penn doesn't have something close to like a 500. No. No, you'd have to get it to Fluger, like the try on. We have a little try on. Yeah, so, like I said, we have probably how many screen bills we have? Like, we've got 20. <laughs> and all different, all different ones. Yep. Which ones do you like the most? Uh, probably the. I like the um, Shimano. Um, what is it? Um, the sixty dollar. The symmetry. No, yeah, it's it's I think it's symmetry. Right. Yeah. Yep. That was that was real nice. Um, and then the uh, the Sienna totally is nice. real nice. Yeah. But that, I probably would put that the best reel I have for the money. We've never had one fail. We've got like four of those, I think. Yeah. We've got like four of those, I think. Those are great. Um, How about the try ons hold up for it? Because they're like 26 bucks. Yep, those, uh, we haven't had any issues with those. Okay. Um, and we've got a couple of Cardinals. Those, I think those are one of the ones that. Cardinals, I, I would see. They stiffened up in the yeah. cold weather. And actually, what's good is that on those was. Uh, the bail system wouldn't flip over anymore. Okay. Like you would click it, it would go, it would go and stop there. Yeah. So, it's so something. Well, only in cold weather. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Like, only, once it, once it's not back in the house, it worked great. <laughs> but just in the cold weather. It was, it was below twenty. <laughs> and I, I don't sell, and I don't know what 
you know, what you had. And you, both of our, it was a tear job. Wouldn't even work. I couldn't even work. Wouldn't even work. And we just sat there until the sun came over and heated it up and it finally gave way. Yeah, and it's not, it's not any, it's not, it's indicative for all reels. So don't think that it's like, oh my God, my Stella, my $600 reel. It's, yeah. You can't think that way because it's, it's indicative of all of it. It's, it's how, how can you not let that happen again? It's, do you want to crack open a six or seven hundred dollar reel? Yeah. Um, chances <laughs> are it's the blue yeah, one. Send it, send it, send it, send it. Yeah, but chances are it's the blue one, which they don't think it works for yeah, anymore. It frames, and now you're really messed up if something happens. So I got a spare. So yeah. So when you got a spare of a spare and the spare is broken, where are you at? So with uh, what I can say with Penn, whether it's our seven hundred or eight hundred dollar reels, all the way down to. The fierces that are like 60. If the, the part, we make a lot of our parts, we also sell a lot of them out to like US made companies. Mm -hmm. And if the company stops making the part, then we can't do anything. And we find that happens in like reels from the 60s and stuff like that. But we have reels that 50 years old that we still have parts for, making parts for. So that's nice. Um, Fluger and, and Abu Garcia, everything gets handled through Berkeley out at headquarters. Um, you might run into some problems 30 years ago. That I don't know. I just have, I don't have those questions. I know the Stellas because I own 15 of them from when I worked at Shimano. And now I'm afraid to use the Blue Reels because you can't get parts. Can they still service them though, Shimano? I wouldn't think so. Yeah. I don't see why not. Yeah. They, they have to have. I would have like I got two blue one thousands and I don't wanna have to give those up, you know. Yeah, I would have to think that they handle all that stuff. Okay. But then, but then I heard they're not making parts anymore, so No, they're not. We were trying to find an H half because that's what's twenty five hundred. I found them on my real pair a couple of years ago. I don't know if he still has them up there. Yeah, I can't speak for them. I can only speak for us. Um, but I, I hopefully that was shed a little bit of light into your guys' world, what you're, you know, seeing up there. Yeah, you know, um, you know, and like I said, you can take this thing to a whole other level. It's just maybe that's next year. You know, feed the machine slowly. You know, and it seems like when you're hooking the fish, it's on there. Right? It's when the inner reverse goes, yeah, of course, because there's force being played. And it just can't, it just slips. So, or if you're in a heavy current flow and your bobber's going down, sometimes it'll spin. But again, it's because there's force, you know, just resting, there's nothing. So, so you guys can put that together. Um, Luke, there's the three that I was telling you about. Um, yeah. you, you He's going to use one of those ones? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. This is... Oh, okay. use it pretty nice. Oh. You're going to actually use it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can go try it. Yeah, you're going to have to actually... Yeah. 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 Yeah.